people in this club But you're gonna strip that down for me Yeah, 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 yeah Bad idea I thought that in filming from the balcony you guys would have a nicer view. The clip of the nine month old puppy that you just saw was actually at the clinic. Also to clarify, the puppy was not the patient. I've been up since 5am this morning. I finished editing one of my other vlogs which I've posted, specifically vlog number five. Now you're wondering what I'm holding in my hand. On my first day here I went down to the receptionist and asked them about the best places for coffee. I was told that you can judge the quality of the coffee here by its price. The cheaper ones tend to be not so good and, and then the more expensive they are the better they're supposed to be. This is different to how coffee is served in the UK. You could pay £3 for a mocha in one shop and the same price in another shop and the quality between the two coffees can differ substantially. The first coffee I got, which you'll see in a different vlog, was at the market. I paid $5.50 for that and I thought the coffee was really good. Today I thought I'd try out the $1 coffee. Here I've got this $1 espresso from Easy Mart and I'm going to try it now. It's fine. It's nice. Yeah, that will do. I don't think that was bad at all. <laughs> I've certainly paid a lot more for coffee in the UK that have been of mediocre quality. True story, bro. Anyway, let's crack on. Grab your tea and relax. As you may remember, or if you were new to the channel, I'm originally from London and I'm doing a hospital placement in Melbourne. The field that I've chosen to do the placement in is dermatology, so that's where you play around with the skin. I started the placement three days ago and I've been in every day since. I've been really fortunate enough to see a load of different conditions, even during this small time. There were two psoriasis clinics. Psoriasis is an autoimmune condition, which means that your body's immune system is a little bit overactive and it begins to attack itself. What happens here is that your skin just keeps growing. No, it doesn't. Insert explanation of psoriasis with diagram. The skin has many layers. The most superficial of them all is the epidermis. In psoriasis, there's usually an environmental trigger such as infection, psychological stress, trauma. There can also be a positive family history and certain HLA antigens associated with it. Essentially, there's injury to the keratinocytes. Activation of antigen-presenting cells like macrophages and dermal dendritic cells occur, and once these interact with T cells, this causes activation of Th1 and 17. Th17 produces IL17 and 22. IL17 indirectly causes hyperplasia of the epidermis and produces a bunch of stuff like chemokines recruiting more white blood cells to sustain the inflammation seen in psoriasis. IL22 is thought to potentiate the proliferation of the epidermal keratinocytes. So this manifests as thick scaly plaques on your skin. It's mostly common in the elbow regions, on the knees, on the scalp, behind the ears. I've also been in acne, rosacea and eczema clinics. On my first day, within about 10 minutes of meeting my supervisor and doctor, she says to me, when the patient comes in, just tell him to strip down from his head to toe, but keep his pants on. So those words were stuck in my head. Within seconds of her leaving the room, the patient walked in and I was just like, there's a lot of people in this club, but you're gonna strip that down for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used the word strip. I said to him, can you just strip down, but keep your boxes on? And instantly I just wanted to shoot myself. One does not use language like that when talking to a patient. Never, ever, 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 ever say strip to a patient. Instead, you're supposed to explain the situation a bit. So you say the doctor wants to see your skin all over your body. Is it okay if you could, you know, undress yourself? No. Do you even say that? Can you even say that? Is it okay if you expose yourself so we can see your skin, but keep your boxes on? I'm going to need to learn how to talk to patients because this is not on. <laughs> anyway, ask your seniors what to say, but just don't say strip. 
There was also one patient who came in with this slightly unusual brown, patchy, scaly rash under his armpits as well as in his groin area. The doctors currently think that this is a condition called granular parakeratosis, which is an uncommon condition presenting as such. However, this particular patient also has diabetes and diabetic patients tend to be more common to infections. In order to find out which of these the patient has, the doctor took a biopsy. This is where you sample the area affected in order to send it to the lab and investigate what is going on. What I like about dermatology is that not only are you sitting in clinics talking to patients, giving them medications, but you also get to carry out small procedures. Taking a biopsy falls into this category and you also get to stitch up the patient if need be, which was the case today. So I thought we could do some suturing. Suturing! The doctors here were nice enough to let me take some equipment home in order to practice. Everything we're using for this DIY suture kit is all vegan. Let me straighten this out. There we go. So this is my layer of muscle. This fat layer. Oh, this smells so good. I'll translate for you. What I said was. You can thicken this layer as much as you want and then the final layer what people use banana to practice suturing on open it out no it's torn and if i peel it carefully so this is the epidermis, underneath it is the dermis, this is the subcutaneous fat layer and that's the muscle. If I wanted to put blood vessels it will go in through like in between, sort of, sort of like there. Right now these layers are not stuck together. What I thought I would do is go and melt the cheese in the microwave and hopefully, hopefully nothing explodes and these layers will stick on a bit better so let me go and do that okay this looks super hot i'm gonna stick my banana layer on is this gonna stick let's stab it a bit please stick this is actually stuck on really well like really well wow patent this. There are several ways to go about practicing suturing on this newly invented kit. You can make different sorts of cuts on the skin and then like practice sewing it up together. There are flaps you can make. However, what I'm going to be doing today is doing what I saw at the clinic. So the kit I've got with me is specific to that. I've got some sutures here, the needle and thread essentially. This is what I was given today. You've got the alcohol prep pads, you've got adrenaline, a syringe to draw the adrenaline with, you've got some formaldehyde, this is where you put the actual sample that you've taken once you've cut it out. I've got the needle and thread, scissors to cut the sample of skin with, four steps to hold the skin whilst I cut with the scissors, a needle holder, so I can do the sutures, some dressings, and then a dressing pack. What I'm going to do now is rearrange the furniture in this room in order to create a setup that will allow me to film all this a bit better. Let's test the power of my creativity. Also, I'm trying to do all this before the sun goes down, so it's quite a bit of pressure.
the equipment here. The first thing I'd like to say is you need gloves and I don't have gloves so I'm just going to have to work without them. Once I've opened this, everything inside it is sterile. That's just sterile field. So you can't touch anything inside of this unless you are wearing sterile gloves. Okay. So I've opened this out and then I can start putting things into the sterile field. These are the forceps. This is a syringe for the anaesthetic. This is the needle holder. I might as well just put this into. Why not? This is the dressing. Oh, I didn't show you. Got this one here. Scissors. That's everything. This can stay out the side. And this is the formaldehyde where I said you can put the specimens into. Okay. And then I've got the alcohol wipe. So imagine the lesion on the patient is this yellow area. So imagine the black part, the banana, is normal and then the yellow is the rash in this case. I've got my alcohol prep wipes and I just want to clean the area. Do that for 30 seconds. Okay, and I let it dry. And I've got the adrenaline here. The syringe here. Okay, you just break the glass like that. Okay, and then take up the adrenaline with the syringe. Okay, and then this can go away. Say I want to, let's decide, I want to get a patch of this area here, okay? So what I'm going to do is inject this local anaesthetic. Get a sharp scratch, just bear with me, and then you inject it. You were injecting this into the fat layer, so that's the cheese in this case. Put this in the sharps bin. I don't have a sharps bin, so I'm putting on the towel. And you let that set in. Open this up, okay, and just leave it aside. I'll put my sample in there. At this point, I will put on my magical gloves, okay? Just imagine I've put on my sterile gloves, so now I'm all sterile. And now I can touch only what's inside here, I can't touch other stuff, okay? This is very embarrassing. I didn't pick up the thing that actually cuts the skin. What I observed is there's this instrument that goes into the skin and then it basically like cuts around her into a circle and then you use a forcep to pull it up you cut it and then you put that inside there once you've taken that out there's a bit of a gap so then you stitch the skin together to seal off that gap however that's not the case here so we're going to change this up and we're going to make an incision a cut i've got a knife right here And remember I mentioned fake blood, so I'm going to make the blood now, let's put some blood in. Oh, this smells nice. Happy Halloween guys. So imagine it's my patient and he's bleeding, okay, he's bleeding, I want to help him. way past dinner time. So let's rewind. Imagine I've got adrenaline in here. You know what, might as well do it again. Got some adrenaline. Okay. And then I inject around the area, oops, into the fat layer. Okay. So I've put the local anesthetic, in this case it's the adrenaline, in order to check whether its effect has kicked in, 
you can pinch the skin with your forceps and just ask your patient if they can feel it or if it's painful. If it's bleeding loads, then you can dab, dab, dab. Now I'm going to use my needle driver to pull the needle out all the way. I'm holding the needle two thirds away from its tip. And what I want to do is Starting from the middle, I'm going to pinch the skin up and go in with the needle at 90 degrees. Okay, and I'm going to come out of the fat layer all the way out. And again, so starting from the fat layer and now out into the skin. I want to leave some thread at this side in order to make my knot. The distance between where I've gone in with the needle here to the midline and here to the midline should be equidistant. Now that we've got this V, or rather a U, what we want to do is try and keep our needle driver between these two points, so between the thread. Whenever I'm wrapping my thread around the needle driver, I want to wrap it towards it. I'll show you how I mean. Wrapping it twice and then I'm clipping this side. And do you see this not like that? Okay. Oh my god, this banana skin's falling apart. No, this was not a good skin. Oh goodness. Oh, that flopped. Okay, let's try this again. So that's my V. And I am pulling my thread in this direction. Okay. So that's the first, no, this material is not right. And then another knot. And then another one knot. Third time lucky, maybe. Just understand how to do it. So you always have your needle driver parallel to your laceration and then you are wrapping your thread around it in this direction, not away from the midline. I've decided to use a finer needle. Let's see if I've got any other areas left to actually suture. I'm gonna go into this part here. Okay. First part again, two thirds away from the tip of the needle. I'm going in again. Okay. Alright, so keeping the needle driver in the middle, I'm wrapping oops, I'm wrapping my thread around twice. Pulling it through. Okay, and then again once, okay. and another one time, and then I want to just pull the thread to one side, grab the other one, and grab my scissors. and cut that off all right so that's a very loose stitch your um laceration is still huge it's probably still bleeding let's be dramatic and just add some more blood get some more gauze and just dab 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 try and stop the bleeding this thread was a lot better but when you're practicing your suturing at home, try and go for the finer thread. I'm using this one. Evidently this banana skin isn't that good for practicing sutures on. What would probably be better is 
not leaving this DIY kit for as long as I've left it because you can see the banana skin has just gone all black. This suture has torn through the banana skin and then the second one here is how it should be but just probably a little bit more tighter on real skin. So you've got your knot and you've pushed it to one side which should make it easier when you are removing the suture once the patient's wound has healed. So you would continue that along. You've got this for your final dressing. You tear out bits of it. Okay, and then cover your wound wherever it is. And just dab, dab, dab. This was my attempt at making a DIY kit to practice suturing at home. I would say the concept of it was nice, but in practice it didn't quite work for me. However, if you do go down the route of using a DIY homemade vegan kit like this to practice your skills, then do let me know how it goes. I hope you've picked up a thing or two. Now I've got to clear this setup, which you can see in the reflection. There's a lot to tidy. Thank you for watching.